was a first-hand witness for a murder that was completely covered up and silenced in Barbour County, West Virginia. Living in Bellington, small town, August 1993. Working at the Laurel Mountain Inn. Inn is about to close. It's an hour until my shift ends. Three guys come in, out of towners. Immediately recognize them as not from these parts due to their accents. Two of them order. The other one hovers around them, not taking a seat. Seems to be on something. Not my job to give a shit. Just focus on cleaning dishes. Another guy walks in, open carrying a pistol. Now, at this point, there are six customers inside. An elderly couple, the three out-of-towners, and the guy with the pistol. There's three workers inside. Two are on break. I'm manning the counter now after having finished cleaning up. The third out-of-towner, the one who didn't sit down, casually strolls into the bathroom. Guy with the pistol unholsters it, shoots the other two guys. I'm completely shocked, freeze up, vividly remember this one detail. His gun did not make a single sound. Holsters it, casually strolls out, with the two out-of-towners dead in their seats. Immediately snap out of it as soon as he's out the door. Elderly couple seem to be in a trance at this point. Call the police. They get there very quickly and act really fucking weird around me as I'm telling my story. They seem to not believe me. Tell them about the third guy in the bathroom. They don't even go to investigate, but tell me there's no one in the bathroom. I'm feeling really fucking nervous at this point. Like... They're suspecting me. They take away the bodies. I go to use the bathroom myself and to check for the third guy. Nowhere to be found. When I walk out, all of the blood is gone and the elderly couple have left too without touching any of their food. I contacted the police again the next day to ask about the situation because it didn't sit right with me. I was told by the operator of the non-emergency, rather matter-of-factly, that there were no records of a murder in the Laurel Mountain Inn. I didn't have work the next day, so I decided to call up one of my friends, who worked just across the road at the Midtown Motel, and would have absolutely seen anyone enter. I asked him. He said he saw the three men enter, and the guy with the pistol, but his account of events is fucking bizarre. He never saw the man with the pistol leave. He also said he could vaguely see the muzzle flash, and thought he heard something loud from the inn. He said he also didn't see any police cars pull up, but two unmarked black Cadillacs that police officer stepped out of. Every single time I've tried to contact the newspaper with this story, or the police, I was turned down and addressed as a liar. It wasn't like they were merely skeptical. They addressed me flat out as if I was making shit up and they knew it. They would never give any evidence that I was a liar if I tried to press them on it. And in general, everything about this is suspect to me. I could be a schizo, I don't know. But I know as a matter of fact, I saw a guy outright shoot two people in the middle of the Laurel Mountain Inn. I don't really believe in the paranormal, and while I do dig those threads, I never cared enough to go hunting for cryptids, even as a joke. That being said, I had one hunting incident that absolutely did feel paranormal. Be me, hunting in Maine. For fun, not anything else. Don't even really hunt, mostly just chill and wander. Shoot a rabbit a day, if anything. Handgun, and I'm not even going to pronounce that. Y'all can get mad and cope and seethe in the comments. And a rifle, because yes, I am exactly that kind of retard. Only out for three days this time. Already on the third day. No drinking today, since I'll drive home overnight. It's a five-hour drive. And I want to leave at midnight, since that's always been my tradition. Want to eat the rabbit before I go, obviously. So I end the day at 1800. Only two-hour walk from my car. Set up camp. Small fire for rabbit. Blanket for me. That's it. Cook. Listen to audiobook. Chill. I'm going to turn to cliches right about now. This is when things got weird. Rabbit comes up the fire. Second rabbit comes up the fire. Mouse comes up the fire. Keep in mind, my camp had A. A human. B. Fire. C. The extra sound from the audiobook. No chance any animal wouldn't stay away from that. Another rabbit. Two more mouses. I am seriously weirded out at this point. They don't come close to me, but they stay by the shine of the fire. A fucking fox comes up to the fire. Does just the same. Doesn't attack the rabbits, the mice. Ignores me. Just staying on his legs. Ears back. By the fire. Then, I heard rustling in the trees around. Very obviously something bigger. I'm still more weirded out than I am afraid. Despite being a massive pussy, no idea why. 
I absolutely don't want anything bigger than a fox trying to chill with me nonetheless. Animals around me ignore me completely now. Same with each other. They follow the rustling in the bushes. Weird as hell. Starting to get freaked out. In case that it's a human, I call out. Nothing happens. Enough is enough. So I fire off a warning shot. Into the air, I don't want to actually hit something that might get angry instead of dead from being hit with a 22. Circling in the bushes stops. Animals all watch the same spot. I do too. Rustling comes back, but seems to leave. Change guns. Wait for around 20 minutes with my animal pals before they start to leave the campfire. Sounds of rabbit and fox behaving like they should have all the time from their direction. Pack up, leave. Make the way to my car as fast as possible. Drive home without stopping. Don't go back there. I still don't really believe in the paranormal, but I'm way more inclined to do so now. No idea what could have gotten the other animals to behave like that, and to come up to a human with fire and sounds for what I can only guess would be protection. I've always been a believer that there are things in this reality which are far beyond our understanding. I used to wholeheartedly believe in things like aliens, cryptids, ghosts, etc. I spent much of my earlier youth at my parents' computer, reading for hours at a time about things of that nature. As I've grown up and read more, the magic has kind of been lost on me. I think many of the stories we read about can be explained, although some not as easily as others. It was saddening to reflect on how many of the stories that fascinated me in the past either came to be debunked as a hoax or explained away as natural phenomenon. I guess in some artsy, philosophical sense, all stories come to an end, and they can't all have good endings. That all being said, I want to believe. I want to believe because I have seen things with my own eyes that I cannot fully explain. The magic of reading other stories and accounts may be a bit lost on me, like I mentioned, but the magic of having my own stories is very much alive. I'm no storyteller, I'm a songwriter, not even a great one, but I will do my best to give a detailed account of some of the weird shit I've seen and try to explain them myself. The Black Rod, summer of 2018, Northwest Ohio. I was sitting on my porch, just letting my dog run around the yard. It was a partly cloudy day, I had been exhausted from working out early in the morning, and I decided I wanted to relax outside and stare at the sky. I was watching the sky for a long time, long enough to have started seeing shapes in every cloud that had passed over. It's weird how the longer you stare at something with no uniform shape, the harder your mind works to put a shape to it. However, what I ended up seeing after a couple hours was no cloud, nor was it hard to see its uniform shape, and in contrast to the white clouds, it was unnaturally black. For maybe eight seconds behind the clouds, I saw this black rod-shaped object pass at great speed behind the clouds. It was silent, and judging how well I could see it pass behind the several layers of clouds and the sky, without disturbing any of them, it had to be massive. I mean, hundreds of meters long. You know how you see a passenger jet in the sky? It looks small from the ground, but you know that it's a large aircraft holding well over 100 humans. This object I saw, it had to make a passenger jet look like a clown car in comparison. Another thing worth noting, I do not think this was extraterrestrial in nature, as the object left contrails, like a man-made aircraft. I think everybody is aware that our world powers experiment with technology that the general population has no idea about. I think this was a case of that nature, but what could it be? An experimental stealth aircraft? Why would it need to be that large for stealth? You would need several dozens of pilots for something that size. Some WMD class of missile test. Plausible, but... If so, where in the fuck did that land? Why would I see something like that flying over Ohio? Another theory, a spacecraft test. A vehicle that can hold a small town's worth of people, capable of speeds beyond any craft we now know of, to get them off this planet. I've been mulling over these thoughts ever since I saw the object. I can't think of anything that makes sense. I do believe it was man-made though. Almost every story about UFOs always mentions that the supposedly alien craft never leaves contrails. This object did. I tried to find stories about it after I saw it. I thought, there is no way I'm the only one who saw this fucking thing, that's impossible. Yet, no stories, no articles, no crazy hillbilly in Michigan, it headed in that direction, claiming that he saw aliens. Nothing. It was there, then it wasn't. 
I have never seen anything like it since. The silhouette. I guess I'll keep the theme of strange black objects going, albeit this one was much smaller and much less artificial. This story comes from my father, probably somewhere in the fall of 2016. I'll briefly explain the layout of the house we lived in, as I find it to be important context for this story. Two-story home, the entire second story was one room. My room, the first story was the kitchen, living room, first bedroom, and office room. The office room connects the living room to the staircase that led to my room. You can see the office when sitting on the sectional we had in the living room. And now, at about 8 p.m., it's dark. We have the lights on. There's a light in my staircase, but the office light is not on, so, from the living room, one could see that my staircase light is on through the doorway, but the office is completely blacked out. My dad is sitting on the couch watching TV when he notices what looks like me come down from the staircase, stand in the darkness of the office, then crouch off to the side of the office in the dark, unseen. He thinks it's me just playing a joke or trying to sneak down thinking they were asleep, trying to not be noticed. He said maybe a minute went by before he saw what actually was me come down the stairs and out into the living room. Obviously, this is weird to him, and he didn't hesitate to tell me what he just saw. He asked, did you just come down here? I replied, no, why? He says, but I just saw you there in the office. You stood there for a second, then got down and hid in the corner. He kept asking if I was sure and if I was lying. I insisted that I wasn't, but he was positive. He just saw someone come into that room, stare at him for a moment, and then crouch off to the side into the dark before I actually came down. Some details he gave were, he heard the footsteps of it. It had my shape, and when it came through the staircase doorway, it nudged a clothes that had been hanging in the doorway, meaning it was a physical being that can interact with its environment. I was particularly unsettled, but skeptical. I immediately go to the office, turn the light on, and of course, nothing is there, as is the nature of these things. We mauled over it for a bit, and I was thinking he'd just been drinking again, and his mind created something false, but he hadn't been drinking, and my dad doesn't make up shit like this. My mom was sitting with him at the time he saw it, but she didn't see anything, so she couldn't corroborate, but she's thoroughly entertained by the two men in her life try and play ghost hunter for a moment. I had not heard anything in the staircase while I was in my room, and if there was something standing there before coming down, I would have seen its shadow cast up the stairs and onto my bedroom wall. My dad never saw the silhouette after that instance, or anything like it since. I've never seen or heard anything of that nature before, and still haven't. I have read a lot though. Theory time. Shadow people. Likely, as this is a well-documented phenomena that even some of the most skeptical can agree is something strange. People who do not believe in the paranormal whatsoever have claimed to have seen shadow people. There's an odd problem about that theory in regards to my dad's story though. Shadow people always seem to appear in one's peripheral vision, never front and center. One tries to look at them directly when they appear, and they aren't there. My dad looked directly at this apparition. It looked back. It may have not wanted to be seen, but it wanted to see something before hiding. It also moved the clothes in the doorway. I've never heard of shadow people moving things. Could it have just been a ghost? Maybe. We always thought the house was haunted. We had always heard some weird things here and there. I once, even faintly, heard a woman singing from the storage units in my room. I always kept those shut after that. Ghosts aren't physical though, in my belief. If they are real, I believe they are fragments of a spirit left behind by the deceased, forms of energy that remain long after passing. I don't believe they're sentient souls. If it was a poltergeist, I don't think I've read a story of a poltergeist taking on a corporeal form, and the only thing this silhouette moved was the clothes in the doorway. The last theory, the one I want to believe in the least is a doppelganger. I've read about doppelgangers, and the more I read, the less I wish I knew. A being that mirrors me and wishes to replace me. Frankly, fuck that. It's mostly unsettling for me to think of this silhouette as a doppelganger, because if that is what it was, it wasn't hiding from my dad in the office. It was hiding from me, and I walked right past it. Although, to this day, I still haven't seen it nor has my dad. So for my mental health, I'm just going to assume it gave up that night and moved on. My grandmother's basement. For some personal reasons I won't get into, there was a long period of time where I lived with my grandma as a toddler. She had a cute two-story house. My cousin and I had rooms upstairs. Grandma usually spent her time watching her shows or cooking downstairs. The kitchen was connected to the basement. My cousin and I got along and played together often, 
with many instances of butting heads. There was one thing we always agreed on though. Do not go in the basement without the light on. Why? Fuck if we knew. We just agreed never to do it. We never really had any explanation as to why. We never thought of ghosts, monsters, or anything of the sort. We would play in the basement all the time if the light was on, but if that light was off and the door was open, it was a closely followed rule between us that we were never to go close to it. My grandma thought we were just being dumb kids. She didn't make this rule, we did. The darkness of the basement was uncanny in a way. We all know it's a human nature to be afraid of the dark. It takes training to get over, but that wasn't what we were afraid of. Anytime I caught myself staring into the darkness of the basement, I was frozen. I was equally entranced and horrified by what I was looking at. My cousin would have to come and pull me away, and I never saw anything down there. It was almost the very essence of the nothingness that I saw that captivated me, and it shook me to my core. My sister, who ended up living with us for a time, had that same rule that I mentioned. She was a teenager at this point, and knew this rule before we did. She said she once stood at the top of the stairs at the basement, and she was pushed down the stairs and into the dark. She told me when she turned to see who pushed her, she saw an old woman who was not our grandma, just standing there, staring. My sister screamed until my grandma came to get her up. Of course, my grandma didn't believe her, and my sister never saw that woman again. I never saw the woman, nor did anyone else, but when she told me her story, I knew I was right to never go down there in the dark. Trash Can Triangle This story takes place at the same house that I saw the black rod from, and where my dad saw the silhouette. Probably fall of 2013, night before garbage day in my neighborhood. Mom tells me to take out the cans at about 10 p.m., and I do so. I roll the cans out to the street. It's a clear night sky out. Many stars. I like to do a bit of stargazing, so I just stand there for a moment, to watch and take it all in. I see a particularly bright star in the distance, kind of in the same area of sky that I saw the black rod. I thought it was pretty, so I focused on it for a minute. It was a bright white, and oddly enough, it was getting larger. That would mean it's getting closer. It's not a star. So, I wait, either to be obliterated by a falling star or bombed by an invading country, whatever my mind could come up with. It wasn't moving fast. It just slowly floated closer and closer over about five minutes. It passed right over me, and I could make out that it was triangular in shape with small static lights at each point, with one large static light in the center. It was completely silent, left no contrails, and didn't change direction. It just flies straight overhead and never strayed from its path. This is the most cliche UFO story I have. The textbook silent triangular craft flying low and leaving me looking like a fucking liar anytime I try and tell the story. I don't know what I saw. Call it aliens, call it experimental military craft, call me a liar. I do not care. All I know is I saw it. I'm more confused about why they keep choosing to fly over Northwest Ohio. The Southern Maine Zombie, summer of 2019. I agree to do an odd job in Boston for a couple of days with my sister, her boyfriend, a cousin, and a dude that I am positive is either not human or just became one shortly before we met him. He's not the focus of the story though. He was just really weird, but he wouldn't be the weirdest thing I encountered on this trip. So we do the job in Boston, make a decent amount of pocket change and figured we'd extend our trip to go see the shores of Maine. We headed out of Boston late in the day, so we're driving through Maine late at night. Some of these roads in Maine are wildly long, with very few lights, just forest on each side. My sister's boyfriend is driving, sister rides shotgun. I'm in the backseat with my cousin and the weirdo. I'm not much of a people person. Everyone's talking and whatnot. I'm just zoning out watching the night pass by out the window. I see a shape further down the road. It looks like a person walking with a somewhat reflective orange jacket on. It's maybe 2 a.m. and we're on an astronomically long road surrounded by nothing but forest and there's maybe one street lamp every two miles. What in the fuck is this person doing out here? I thought. We're driving maybe 55 miles per hour so we're coming up on him pretty quick. But when we were close enough for me to make out what I saw, I recoiled. It looked like a man but it looked wrong. He was wearing an orange jacket, maybe some dirty jeans, but he was walking with an uncanny limp. His left leg looked like it was broken, his arms were firmly planted at his side, and his head and neck were sideways. 
I don't know how to better describe it. It's like his head was smashed against his shoulder. He had what I think was hair, but in hindsight, it looked too solid to be hair. It looked like dreads that were too moldy. I couldn't make out a face as we passed him. He walked in the same direction that we were driving. I asked, did anyone just fucking see that back there? Sister's boyfriend replied, see what? Then proceeded to slow down, which I then promptly commanded, don't fucking slow down, go faster. Nobody saw the man like I did. They knew we passed somebody, but I had to explain exactly what he looked like and why I freaked out. We were all pretty shook up after that, but the rest of the trip went fine without any other weird happenings, aside from the weirdo that we were with. We thought he was liable to kill us when we were asleep at a rest stop, but he's a different kind of story though. I maintain, and will continue to maintain until I die, that I saw a zombie that night. Makes the story fun. In reality, it was probably a homeless and somewhat disabled person just meandering at night, and the dark of night made my mind create some horrific image of a non-human entity. Whatever he was, I hope to never see him again. And what doesn't make sense to me is there were no houses for miles in that area, or town, or anything. Where did he come from? Where was he going? Something about Cotton Eye Joe. Why was he there? If he was in some sort of trouble, why didn't he wave us down when he saw us coming? The whole thing was just weird. Post spooky green text. I'll start. Be me. College student planning to go on a backpacking trip with a friend in Appalachia. Let's call him Nick. Planned trip is only a two day, 18 mile hike. No big deal. Close to Christmas time, so we aren't expecting the trail to be busy on the stretch that we're looking at. First night, we're looking at staying in a hostel. Second night, we will be camping in tents at a campground. Our plan seemed pretty bulletproof. Packed my Ruger Wrangler in case we ran into some rabbits to cook. The stretch of the trail we planned on hiking was pretty rocky, so we made sure to have extra first aid supplies in case one of us sprained an ankle. Fast forward to Friday night. Drive up. We get to the dirt lot outside of the stretch of the trail. It's around 8 p.m., so already dark but the hostel we will be sleeping in for the night is only one mile out. Get there at around 8.30. Took us around 10 minutes to get our stuff out of my car. Only people there, so we don't have to worry about being quiet. Shut the door behind us. Rev up our camp stoves to make some tasty freeze-dried spaghetti. Yum, dot JPEG. Head to bed at 10 p.m. as we will need rest for tomorrow's hike. Hostels on the stretch of the trail are basically cabins. They have steel doors, and this particular one had a skylight. To add to this, sleeping arrangements were wooden bunks, around eight total in this hostel. There were two wooden tables for eating at nailed to the floor in the center of the room. We chose to sleep in the bunk directly across from the door, with me on the bottom bunk and Nick on the top. Wake up suddenly, still kinda half asleep. Check watch. 2.14 AM. Skylight is covered. Must have snowed. Snow wasn't on the forecast. Kinda odd, but whatever. It's December in the Northeast. It's not that out of the question. About to go to sleep when I hear a light tapping on the steel door to the shelter. At first, think that it must be a hiker showing up late. Get up to open the door for them when I stop myself. Why the fuck would someone decide to hike on a notoriously rocky section at midnight? Decide that it's just an animal. Go back in my sleeping bag and head back to sleep. Around 20 minutes later, I wake up again to door sounds. This time, someone's knocking instead of tapping. Consider shitting my pants, but manage not to. See that Nick is already up, shining his flashlight at the door. Dude, what the fuck is happening? I ask. You think someone's trying to get in? He spits back. No shit, that PNG. Whatever the hell was knocking on the door, we weren't letting them in. If it was a person, they would just have to set up their tent and sleep outside for the night. Knocking continues for around 10 more minutes, until it finally stops. Guess the retard finally took a hint, I whisper. Nick chuckles, but then we hear what sounds like a man crying on the other side of the door. Not a kid, but like a 60-year-old man. We both freeze, completely in fight-or-flight mode. Maybe it's just an animal, except I don't know what fucking animal sounds like a crying old dude. Snap out of it and decide to draw my Ruger, but feel that whatever the hell is making that noise won't give a shit about being shot with a 22. Noise starts to get higher off the ground that is, until suddenly, it seems like the source is on the roof. Slowly, look at the snow-covered skylight, clearly see boot prints just in the center of it, 
fuckthisimeout.mp4. Pull out satellite phone, since we aren't retards and packed one just in case. Dial 911. Tell them where we are, and that there is a crying geriatric on the hostel we're in. 911 operator sounds like she's trying to hold back a laugh, but tells us an officer is heading over to check it out. Suddenly, feel a bit of relief. 45 minutes later, old dude still crying on a skylight. We see a red and blue strobe reflect off the snow. Finally, he's here. Crying from old dude stops. Bootprints still at the same spot on the skylight. Me and Nick quickly put on our shirts and get up to meet him. He knocks on the door. Received a report of an old man crying on the roof. <laughs> yeah, that's us. We'll be there in a second. Put on my Ruger, as despite not being a friend, I'd still rather not get banned the fuck out by a trigger-happy cop. Let him in and tell him what the fuck has been happening for the past two plus hours at this point. Show him the boot prints on the roof. He still seems to not quite be buying it, but he says he'll do a parameter check of the hostel to see if he can find any prints or personal items of someone who could be messing with us. Goes back out the door, closes it behind him. In the meantime, Nick and I set up a lantern and decide to sit at one of the tables and wait. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Wonder what the fuck is taking so long. Decide to check over at the skylight and notice that now there are two sets of boot prints instead of just one. We end up staying awake until sunrise until finally gathering the courage to go outside and see what the fuck was happening. Cop car is gone. No sign of the officer. Dude just bailed on us, what an asshole, Nick says. Consider calling 911 and complaining when Nick gets a genius idea. There's a tree overhanging the roof, so he wants to climb it and go up on the roof to check out the boot prints. Tell him it's a mega retarded plan and that we should just head back to my car and scrap the trip. He's adamant on doing it. Fine, but try and get a picture of the prints, I concede. Eat my breakfast grits while waiting for him to get down. He doesn't. No noise coming from the roof. Oh, fuck. Whatever was up there must have got him. Decided to climb roof myself. When I reach the top, find nothing except Nick's phone, right next to the boot prints. Yell out for him on the roof, assuming he should be close and able to hear me. No reply. Pick up phone and check his pictures. He took around five. Click on first one. Picture of the roof. Nothing on it. Seems normal. Second one. Picture of the sun. Third one. Picture of a black work boot sitting on the roof. Fourth one, super close up picture of the snow. Assumed he dropped the phone at this point. Fifth one, picture of me eating my grits next to the hostel. Without thinking, immediately get off the roof and run back to my car. Fuck packing my shit or finding Nick. I'll file a missing persons report. Drive to the nearest town and call the local PD. Hi, I need to file a missing persons report. Me and my friend were sleeping overnight at a hostel on the Appalachian Trail and he went missing in the morning while looking for something on the roof. Also, you guys sent an officer here, and he left without doing anything. We are aware he had an emergency he needed to attend to, answers a man who sounds oddly familiar. Hey, wait a fucking second, you're the asshole that- Hangs up. No idea if they even filed a report. Decide to look around the hostel, myself, just to at least get our stuff, and see if I can find any footprints that could be his. This time I bring my Mauser that I have in my trunk of my car, just to have more of a fighting chance against whatever was on the roof. Park in the lot again, walk until I can see the hostel, see what looks like a torn shirt on the stairs to the door. The exact shirt that Nick wore the night before. Feel an immense wave of dread dawn on me. Know for certain that he's not going to be found, if they will even try searching for him. Go back to my car feeling defeated. No idea what I'm going to do or what that thing was that most likely killed my friend, or why the police refused to take me or the situation seriously. I'm a first time poster here, so sorry for my story lacking details and depth, but I am genuinely really curious about the explanation of this cause. It's the only thing I've ever seen that took me back. Be me, four years ago, in my car on a lake shore with an, at the time, current girlfriend, smoking weed, feeling each other up in the front seats, looking at the clouded night sky. After a few minutes, I noticed she stopped playing with me, even though I was still playing with her. Think she wants to go to the back seat. Look at her, her stare, frozen, looking at the sky. I look up, there's flying lights going from left to right in a line with the same light intensity as a star on a clear night sky. I stop touching my girlfriend. We both just keep looking at the lights and going, 
Holy fuck. Holy shit. Pick related is kind of what it looked like. The lights were moving in approximately a 25 to 30 second interval, from appearing on the left to disappearing on the right. This went on for at least five minutes. Does anybody have an explanation for it? I think it sure as shit wasn't a military exercise or whatever. That was in Croatia. We don't have that kind of military. Used to have a vague sensation of coming quote unquote unglued as a child. My young brain caught it slipping off and it was a feeling like something was leaving my body. I thought of it kind of like when you see heat waves emanating off of a fire. I felt like I was suddenly losing something that I couldn't quite place, but it made me really sad. What happened very randomly and suddenly, but always when I was alone. The last time it happened, I was 12, I think, sixth grade, with my friend on the playground. Get the same intense sad feeling and realize I'm about to slip off. Faintly hear my friend say, wow, way in the distance, like he's far away. I look over at him and he's staring at me, asks, how did you do that? From his point of view, he said I began making weird sounds and then a ghost came out of me and flew away. He thinks I'm magic after that. Never happened again, and he and I lost contact after I moved. Still not sure what the hell to make of that memory. Okay, you keep talking. Do you, you want to say hi? Huh? Do you want to say hi? Say hi to everyone. Okay, I think they'll take it.